seeing the new new curse, double new there, going up against Coast, the two LCS teams that have uh, already made their way to relegations. So we're going to see who really dukes it out between the, the top two contenders for the LCS team spot, I'd say. I, I phrase that pretty poorly, but what I'm trying to say is we got to see who's the best of the current LCS teams. And uh, aside from that, we got some other matches coming up as well. Malfus, got any details on those? Yeah, it's going to be Curse Academy going up against Velocity Esports. It's going to be the next game. That's going to be followed by Gold Gaming Los Angeles taking on Cognitive Gaming. And our final game of the night is going to pit Napkins in Disguise versus Infinite Odds. Like I said, this is the new new curse. So if you haven't been keeping up with the drama, which has been just coming on nonstop, um, Poe Belter is no longer on Curse. Quas has gone from GGLA to join Curse as their solo laner is what they described him as. And I believe um, Aphromu is no longer on the team, being replaced by Cop. All right, so everybody who is watching here, that uh, Curse Goomba down there, that is indeed Cop. That is, you know, the Smurf account that he got from the LCS. Uh, so, and Zekent supporting, obviously, Boy Boy. They have him billed as the mid laner thus far. Uh, but they did, as Studio mentioned, they are billing Quas and Voiboy as their two solo laners right now. So do expect to see some flexibility there, some variability throughout the season. And I will dominate holding down the jungle duties. Their opponent for game number one is going to be Team Coast. It's going to be Zion Spartan up in the top lane. Nintendo Dex in the jungle. Shifter in mid. Don't match me playing AD carry. And on support, we find Daydreaming. And now th this is going to be a very, very just weird style of interaction because we're going to have Coast, which is a you know, former LCS, well, <laughs> LCS relegated team. And they've stuck together. Their last replacement wasn't actually a replacement like one they wanted to do. It was when Bloodwater left the team, and they kind of had to. Everything else has just been a substitute being replaced by the normal player. And frankly, this is essentially the old school, we've been around together forever team going up against what is a new team, a new new team because of the constant replacements. Luckily, there's still going to be some interaction um, between Boy Boy and Cop, but that's not really what you look for in the terms of synergy be between a team. Uh, the solo lane AD carry combination can work, but not really what you want to be the focus. All right, so we've been uh, talking about what we're going to be seeing all night. We should start focusing a little bit on what we're going to see in game number one here. Uh, Team Coast taking on Curse, Coast to Bandway, Cassidy, Renekton, and Vi. So I feel like those are two target bands at Quas with the Cassidy and Renekton. We've seen him play those very, very strongly. And I will dominate Vi. Vi is just such a powerful ch champion coming out of the jungle right now. Not particularly surprising to see her get banned out. Elise, Jackson, Zed going to be the bands thus far from Team Curse. And we look at the picks. Uh, Coast have first picked themselves a Caitlyn, followed by, uh, excuse me, see Quas and I will dominate have grabbed up Aatrox and Orianna for their side. Uh, so I will have to wait and see exactly where that ends up going just because uh, Aatrox is a very, very potent jungler right now, but it's also one of Quas's very favorite champions. So I think they have some flexibility there. Uh, they've gotten Annie and Corky for the AD carry and support duo down there in the bottom lane. And then back on the side of Team Coast, they picked up Jarvan, they picked up Zyra. Now they just need an AD carry and a, and a uh, mid laner. Yeah, I have to say it's a very, very quas looking lineup. You have a, a lot of synergy, though, if it is I Will Dominate coming out of the jungle with that Aatrox pickup, because all of a sudden, Orianna Ball, the Shockwave, is very easy to land. Uh, with the Aatrox initiation from Dark Flight. Uh, overall, you can kind of tell, like, Curse is going for a more new style team. You know, any support, uh, Jungle Aatrox, something that's been not so popular in North America necessarily, but definitely came uh, very popular after Gambit played it quite a bit, and Fnatic as well. And you look at over at Coast, this is just kind of a, a Coast lineup. They have Nintendo Dex on Jarvan, which they always make and play. Um, a ribbon pickup, actually, on Zion Spartan. Like, that's a Zion Spartan champion. So everybody's just going comfortable with their picks. In this case, Coast is old style, and we have the new style coming out from Curse. So just taking a look here. All we need left is the uh, is the other solo laner uh, coming out from the side of Team Curse, and we'll kind of find out where the actual distribution of that is going to be. They're showing us a Fizz. Fizz for Sorry is definitely a counter pick that we saw extremely often uh, early on. Well, they do have an Orianna. Uh, so... Mm -hmm. I mean, they could theoretically still run Annie as a mid laner. It's it's going to be a tough pickup just for the sole fact that uh, you know it, it can't burst down Riven just because of Riven's shield. But everybody else, with the exception of Jarvan, <laughs> will instantly die. It's also Zekin, so he could be trolling them. I could be. I mean, he is. Let, let's be honest here. Obviously, Zekin is one of the most well-known Poppy players in North America on that account, Slap Happy, where he pretty much just played Poppy all the way up to. Who knows where. Uh, but Quas has been known to pull out the poppy from time to time as well. But we're not going to be seeing it this game. They lock in the Shin. So Quas looks like he's going to be taking the Shin up to the top lane. They've got Voy Boy playing the Orianna in mid. I Will Dominate is going to be handling the jungle Aatrox. And we see Cop and Zekent going to be playing that quirky Annie lane in the bottom. 
Lots of magic damage, lots of aggression, but over on the side of Coast, you got the Riven being played by Zion Spartan, Nintendo Dex playing Jarvan, Shifter on Ari, Don't Mash Me with the Marksman Caitlyn, and of course Daydreaming playing Zyra. Two very, very different styles of team, but two very familiar compositions if you've watched World or uh, LCS. I'll be very interested to see if we find ourselves in a 2v2 situation. Annie does thrive there, but arguably one of the most obnoxious lanes to have to play and support Annie against will be that Caitlyn Zyra. Very, very difficult to close the gap, very difficult to initiate fights, very difficult to avoid getting poked down at range. Uh, so what do you think we're going to be seeing from the bottom lane matchup? Well, if they do go for the 2v2, like you mentioned, the poke is just immense. Zyra has 575 attack range, which is higher than most supports. So Annie's higher range, 625, is going to be not that effective you can't really auto attack harass with that they could try and shut down riven at the same time Riven's shield and just the predictability of annie you know when she's going to be able to stun you makes it a bit trickier but it also makes the 1v2 or 3v1 die very effective i would assume they're going to go for the 2v2 though i think both sides feel like they can play it and really as long as zion spartan gets shut down that's going to be the main focus for uh curse early all right, guys, we're going to take a quick break here for a couple of commercials. When we come back, it's going to be game number one, game number one of the night. I'm Alpha Sex and being joined here by Studio. Summoners have bought their starting items and are heading out onto the play of field, onto the field of play. The play of field indeed, Malphus. Luckily, 
we can see some invades coming out from both sides. Um, they're both grouping up, which implies that they want to try and do something together as a team, both heading towards the uh, opposition jungle. You can see the pings coming out from Curse. You know they're going to go straight towards that blue side bottom jungle. And you can see the pings coming out from Ghost. You can see they're going straight towards the top red side jungle. So overall, both teams get confident in their ability to invade. You know, Ari has a charm. Riven has a lot of damage. And even the brief CC at level 1 from her uh, broken wings. And Zyra can also get the root. Actually, uh, Daydream is starting with his deadly bloom, though. But both teams are confident they can do something. Even if it's just Ward because you expect Curse to invade with the Annie and the uh, Dark Flight from I Will Dominate, or in the case of Curse, invade with that comp because, my god, that is a good invasion comp with Annie and Shen and Aatrox. And it just keeps going. The invade potential just keeps going up. Absolutely colossal. They just stepped through here. They were going to go ahead and go for the synchronized back in this brush. They got the wards down that they wanted. They don't want to stick around any longer. That Annie level 1 is positively terrifying if she comes out with an AoE stun. Level one, it's just absolute potential to wreck an entire team. But we're not going to end up seeing that come out. As Curse have now regrouped, and we see uh, the bottom lane combination plus Aatrox are heading up towards the top side of the map. So it could be a red start coming out from Aatrox. And actually, one of the wards placed by Coast was just the one minute ward. They really were just looking out for the invade. And this is a good start. They're going to make sure that I Will Dominate has a red buff. You could actually go for a very early gank, depending on what they want to do. And with the fact that Zegan is playing Annie, they could actually just try and kill Riven at level 1. She has a lot of mobility, she has a flash, but the 3 or so seconds of CC from a Dark Flight into an Annie Sun combination, combined with the uh, exhaust and just a high burst coming out from Cop, that could be huge. And that could win the game. Well, not win the game, but win the lane right there. Exactly. I mean, Corky Annie is just... There's just so much damage in that lane. Like, Corky is just... Uh, he's just so strong right now, and then you combine that with, with arguably the most aggressive lane bulliest support around. Uh, Andy Corky, it, you put that into a 2v1 against a melee range champion, almost at no point is Zion's Spartan even going to be safe to just try to farm up under the tower, as the potential for very, very quickly diving, picking up the kill, and getting back out is so high. I mean, the, the level 1 damage just from spells is 160 from Zeke and Cop. You, act, you factor in auto attacks, you factor in the range of Annie, and the fact that even though her base AD is kind of low, but she can almost always get an auto attack off, usually two in those brief engagements, and her damage really stacks up so quickly. At the same time, Daydreaming and Don't Match Me going aggressive bot lane, she's going to have a lot of trouble there just with the sustained harass. You know, you can outrange and incinerate, you can outrange and disintegrate from Annie, but outranging auto attacks from Caitlyn, outranging the harass from Zyra is much, much harder to do. So we see Don't Match Me and Daydream, and they're, they're, they're going for a combination of just harassing Quas down and then last hitting the creeps. And then once the creep wave is too large, they push it in a little bit more aggressively there and force them to miss as much CS as possible while getting as much damage as they can down. In the mid lane, Voidboy and Shift are trading once again, both starting with Flask. That Orianna versus Ari matchup is becoming kind of classic. It's, it's very, very quickly becoming the duel of the ages. It, it's a pretty skill-based matchup. I, I personally feel that Orianna has a little bit more control earlier on, and... Uh, because she will go for a chalice type build, has less mana issues and is less blue dependent than Ari. But at the same time, Shifter, if he catches Voiboy out of position at all, especially post level 6, he can go for an ult combination, he can burst down Voiboy very quickly, and there's very little Oriana can do about it. So overall, very skill based match, but aggression going down in the bot lane. All Dominate taking a bit of harass, and that's okay though. You know, he's Aatrox, he can actually still jungle pretty safely with uh, low HP. And he's, he's mostly there to make sure Shen gets some experience, Shen gets something. Kind of like what Nintendo X is doing top right now. Pushing the line up, making sure Zion Spartan gets some stuff done. Cool teams are kind of used to this playstyle. They played each other a bunch in the past. And even though they have a new lineup on Curse, the focus, I'd say, you know, the solo lane of top and mid were always kind of the same for both teams. But make sure Shifter does well, make sure Voiboy does well for Curse. And it's kind of showing here that that playstyle where they both defend the top laner. So I mean, we've seen that the 1v2 meta has kind of become a situation where that solo laner and the jungler combine to form a kill lane. And I feel like that's much more evident in the lineup from Coast with Jarvan Ribbon, uh, which to me is a lot more terrifying than Shin Aatrox. Aatrox has a, a lot of good early game damage, and there is some significant CC between the two of them, but it just doesn't have that scary combination of the Jarvan armor shred coming through with Ribbon following up. Oh yeah, that is that is a devastating combo. You can actually see Nintendo X looking for that kill. But really what it comes down to is you, you want someone that can possibly get a kill, but at a minimum you want to be able to help them survive. So Jarvan compared to another another jungler like Zack, Zack would have a bit more trouble um, being threatening in lane with Riven. So part of it is that yes, it's a big threat, but it's also a big threat to make sure they can actually push forward and get Riven some CS and some experience.
As you can see, the top laners are just having no fun this game. 13 CS versus 9 CS. And I mean, this is this is what a 2v1 is all about, right? Just getting the tower as quickly as possible. Dominate coming forward with a Dark Flight. Not going to be able to get too much down. This don't matter. He's able to step aside and uh, get himself out from under that with the 90 caliber net. And, you know, Dominate is, as you mentioned before, just trying to buy space for Quas. And we talked a little bit about how much more kill potential there was from Nintendo Dex and Zion Spartan. And Zion Spartan's being rewarded with that. He's got a little bit more CS uh, than Nintendo Dex, or excuse me, than his, his, his opponent, Quas, does on the other side of the map. Actually, seen, seen Nintendo Dex playing the support role, just sitting in the brush, just making sure Riven gets experience in CS. That, that is kind of uh, the most. This is the most passive two v two in a sense because both uh, teams realize how easily someone can die, and as a result, they're playing super passively, just going for the farm. But it, it's unfortunately the best choice. I want to see blood spill. I want to see blood just across the place. But we might see with Aatrox headed bottom. I will dominate. It's not going to get spotted by anything. So if they want to try and catch out that bot lane with Adrian and Dope Mash Feet, now is the time. Creep with is at the tower. Quas is going to step back out. They know something's up. They spot Dominate out of the ward. Dominate going to get the blades down. Doesn't want to use the Dark Flight until Dope Mash Feet has already used his flash. Here comes that flash out now as he tries to come in on the other side of it. We see Quas comes back forward there, uses the taunt flash combination, going to get the cleanse out of Don't Mash Me. Don't Mash Me going to back away from this huge damage coming out from the E of Aatrox at max range, but they're not going to be able to pick up either kill. However, they do get the cleanse and the flash out of Don't Mash Me. I get a lot more though because they have Shifter roaming towards that bot lane. Daydream is pressing forward. They know something is up. They know Shifter is MIA. He's going for this kill. I will dominate. Oh, will not be able to get away. The Orbit Deception at max range, checking, catching that out. Very, very nicely played from Shifter. A beautiful roam, and Voiboy is going to have to find some way to punish him. He could try and just, uh, zone him out from this CS right now. Voiboy actually roaming towards that river, trying to make sure that Shifter can't easily get CS. They're going to meet up right now, and Voiboy doesn't have a lot of mana to go for a kill, but he can just delay Shifter. You see he's maxing out that distance, a big chunk of damage going down on the Shifter there. Shifter does have the Crystalline Flask, couple charges left over there. So he's not going to be too upset about that one. Zion Spartan stepping out from under the tower, getting a decent amount of damage down onto Zekent, but taking a massive amount of burst right back. Exhaust comes out, Zekent maybe thought they had some kill potential, but without another 1.75 second stun coming out of Andy, they did not have the opportunity to convert that. Actually mid lane of Flash Blunt from Voiboy, the intended X went forward, used a Cataclysm and just... Voiboy got out of there, but burned a cooldown. There's actually going to be a really good engagement bot lane for Curse because they did blow Don't Mash Me's Flash and Cleanse. But it was just a follow up from Ari. Unfortunately, uh, they both, uh, I will dominate and Quas need to sit underneath the turret, recall together, and try and just counter Ari's gank if she did approach. But it's a scary thing to do because it can very easily turn into a double kill for an Ari, and it's also, it's, they were not ready for that gank. Shifter gonna get pulled back in by the shockwave. There's the distance coming out. I will dominate. We'll get the lockup. Quas comes in from the side with a ton. I will dominate is the one to pick up the kill as uh, Curse collapsed on the mid lane with a three man gank. Good response kill. No ward coverage in the mid lane uh, to protect Ari from that. And you don't expect the top laner to roam like that, especially in conjunction with the jungler. So here comes the Tender Dex trying to defend. Down front's coming in from behind. They have a lot of damage and ultimate sword blown. They know that there's no ultimate coming out here on Boy Zion Spartan. Quas is going to be the one to get popped up. Zion Spartan still popping the old. Gets locked up before he can use the wind slash. Quas picks up that kill. Nintendo Dex has to flash back out. Can he get away? The dagger's not going to land. The Q and the W will be good. Boy Boy picks up yet another kill with that dissonance. Oh, big mistake coming up from Zion Spartan. Accidentally using the wind slash in the wrong direction. The animation came out after Shen taunted. So it's missing Quas which would have picked up that kill most likely. Now mid turret's going to fall. They do have shifted in the area. Actually flash from Daydream is going for this. Daydream and trying to lock up Quas. Quas going to try to get out. Will not be able to do so. Shifter follows that up. A kill goes over to Daydream, and just like that, Coast answered two more back. That push lasted long enough that Shifter was able to respawn from base and approach back back into the mid lane. Still, though, the top turret does fall. But overall, a very very good counter play. And actually, this game's evened up. The the one advantage there is that they did manage to get the the mid tower low. Uh, on the side of coast. That, that mid turret only has 400 HP. It's going to go down soon. At the same time, but kills and tur turrets are equal now. So a very, very good job from both teams really making the plays. And you got to check out that CS gap as well in the mid lane. 20 CS separating Voidboy and Shifter at this point. Uh, Voidboy just using that, that extremely aggressive Oriana coming back out, using the shield, getting really, really strong auto attack trades. But Coast, they're going to try to actually build themselves an advantage on this one. They recognize that they have a positional advantage and they're going to take it down the dragon. There's going to be no response here whatsoever from Curse. Coast grabbing themselves a 10 minute dragon. As that happens, Don't Mashy pushes in the bot turret, actually takes out a decent chunk of HP from the, that tier 2. Uh, top turret still being pushed in by Riven. Shen does have the ultimate now, so if they go for a 4v4, 
Curse can try and turn this around with a Shen ultimate, but Zan Spartan, I mean, he would not have any trouble interrupting that one. <laughs> he just attacks the turret with Quas Danily trying to CS near him. Does that taunt too. Zan Spartan, next level plays, dancing around into the tower. Oracle's Elixir are going to go ahead and get picked up here by Daydream, and so he's recognized that they're roaming around enough that they need to start taking control of the map. And Curse, they're going to answer back with their second tower of the game. That brings the goal within 500. Coast still leaving it, uh, leading rather at the 11 minute mark. Zion Spartan initiates onto Quas, going to get a decent amount of damage down. They're just going to go ahead and back away. Uh, definitely a good response uh, kill. I, I like the, the Oracle pickup from Daydream, and he got an early kill. He's 1-0-1. He has his core build as support, which is brown boots and a sight stone. So now if they want to go for an early map control, for an early aggressive game, he has the goal to go ahead and just pop the oracles and roam and just take out wards like crazy. Actually missing a ward uh, south of him, but actually gank on down, pouring up in the top lane. Down Spartan gets taunt, use the flash, come back out with the ultimate, wind slash is going to be able to pick up the kill on the quas. Can I will dominate, answer this back, yes indeed he can. Using the uh, the blood price there for the bonus damage on the third auto attack from the W is going to be able to clean that up. Now Shifter though, coming back in. I will dominate, still has the passive, so Shifter is going to have to kill him twice. I will dominate, going to respawn. We'll go ahead and use the Dark Flight. Shifter coming back out there. We'll dodge out the E. The second tick of the Orbit Deception comes back through, and Shifter cleans up that kill under the tower. I mean, Shifter knows a lot more about balls than I do, because I have no idea how that second tick of Orbit Deception did hit. But Boy Boy is going top lane, looking for that kill. I don't know if Shifter's going to make it out. He does recall the back to base just in time. This it sets up a good situation bot line because they know Orion is top. They just saw him by the creep wave. Shen recently died, though. He does have the ultimate available. And with I will dominate dead, this means Daydream and Dope Mastery can push in. Tenu Dex can push in mid lane. They're just going to have a little, little bit more map control. It's a very, very map-focused game for them now that they do have the Oracles pick up on uh, Zyra. Because you can actually tell just looking at the mini-map, there are very few wards placed by Curse. They have nothing on Coast side of the map. And Daydreamin has been able to go so far into their jungle that there's also very little just uh, around their own jungle, even for defensive wards. And you gotta give a shout out to the early map movement from Shifter. That's the second roam that he successfully pulled off. Boy Boy is now the one getting caught out. Nintendo Dex getting the pop up there with the red buff, trying to chase this down. We see Zion Spartan hopping over the Baron wall with that third tick of Broken Wings. Will not be able to close the gap down. Shifter doesn't have the ultimate back available just yet. About 10 seconds later, and Boy Boy would have gone down. You can could, you could tell the focus is from Curse. Uh, actually, Flash coming out from uh, Deacon, going for the kill on the Daydream, and... And he's gone! It's a beast. I mean, that was, that was an Annie initiation. You flash forward, you get a kill. That's how she works, but now, the members of Curse, they, they could be in a 5v3 very easily here. But it's still a very dangerous position as they're being chased out by both Nintendo Dex and Daydream, and, or, and uh, Don't Match Me. Shift to come back around. The Shin ultimate going to get burned here on I Will Dominate. He goes down very, very quickly. Quas will not be able to join this fight. Exhaust on the Don't Match Me. Going to immediately cleanse that one out. Zekin going to find himself all alone. It's a double kill going down for Shifter. He picks up his fifth of the game. Zion Spartan, meanwhile, is going to go ahead and dive Quas up in the top lane. The tower does fall. Quas being chased out. The Tiamat is done at this point for Zion Spartan. Zion Spartan with the Wind Slash. Going to get locked out by the Faint. Blocked out, rather, by the Faint. Zion Spartan continue to chase this down. There's the pop up. There's the kill. Zion Spartan chases Quas through everything and picks up yet another kill. I mean, th this is this is Curse's game at the moment, or not Curse, Coast game at the moment. Too many C teams. Uh, they have Zion starting to snowball. That initiation bottom would have been okay, except I will dominate. Didn't have the ultimate up. Boy Boy now in danger as the initiation comes out from Nintendo Dex and they're picking up kills left and right. But the problem bot lane, for the bot lane fight was that I will dominate died too quickly. He couldn't go in. He couldn't initiate with the Shen ultimate because the Shen ultimate wasn't enough and Shifter's just been doing too well. With his large rod, he almost has a DFG finished actually. Should be able to finish it when he returns back to base. Actually, finish that and his uh, source, sorcerer issues. This is not looking good just because the team coming out from Coast Snowball so easily. Like, look at the picks they've been making. Ari Charm lands, Zion Spartan can just 1v1 anybody top lane now. Or Nintendo Dex comes out from the side, and that's an easy kill. That's an easy kill because of how much follow up they have for that and how much damage all of the characters now have. It's, it's, I mean, you saw Boy Boy, he, he was maybe a little bit far forward there, a little bit further, for, you know, further than he should have been at least. Uh, but, you know, Nintendo Dex was just able to get into range, get up, get the pop up, and as soon as he got popped up, Shifter was right there with the charm. I mean, there's, there's almost nothing you can do about that. Once that chain of events has started, it's not going to end until you're sent, you're sent back to the summoner platform. Like, the only way for them to interrupt uh, the initiation is to have Zeke go forward or I will dominate go forward and just CC the members of coast themselves. Like, they have to fight fire with fire, but their fire is a lot harder to reliably land, or in just some cases, slower. 
The only instant spell coming out from Annie is going to be the Incinerate, which is short range. Everything else has a cast time. And then Taunt and Direct Flight are also a little bit slower, as well as Shockwave, when it comes to actually applying CC. So very, very hard for them to counter initiation if they, they have been caught out. Actually, Shipper looking top lane. It's going to be a 3v2 because, well, Oriana and Aatrox are in the area. Shifter gonna open up on a boy boy. He's gonna get the jump on him with a charm. There's this command shockwave, but it's nowhere near enough. Shifter gonna take a little bit of damage from the shockwave and the ignite, and that's gonna be about it. Meanwhile, Zion Spartan diving Quas in the top lane. Shifter gonna be able to tr get up into range. Does not land the charm as Quas flashes away from that one. Max range. I will dominate comes in from the other side. Shifter getting taken out extremely low as I will dominate pops the ultimate going through with the massacre. Zion Spartan trying to turn back in. Gonna threaten uh, Quas pushing back out. Zekin is able to land a stun. Zion Spartan will he be able to get away from this one. Nintendo Dex is gonna offer himself up as the body block. Uses the ultimate he's already taken down i will dominate can he get on the cross cross gonna get popped up as that flag was still hiding in the brush nintendo dex on the run from cop doesn't want to go down will go down triple kill comes down for cross or excuse me for cop as he comes in for the back of the fight and cleans everything up and cop picking up that kill that's huge but guess what the bot turret goes down don't match and daydreaming are just enjoying their time in the sun going for that cs going for that easy easy turret i mean curse picked up more in terms of kills but he lost a little bit more map control, and then Don't Mash Me isn't being stopped. It, it was huge for them. They had to get those kills. If that had just been a one for zero trade, then they would have been done for in a sense, because they still would have lost bot trade. They still would have fallen behind. But still, the, these these kills they're getting are after losing something. That, that in the end, was, a, I believe, a two for three exchange. That will dominate going down, and Boy Boy going down, I want to say. And that's just... It's just still not that good, especially if you're losing bot trade. Their overall gold shift still went in favor of Coast. And you see, I mean, so much of that gold is is just focused in on a cop at this point. They have to be careful about protecting that Corky. Curse will be able to, to take down the dragon. They grab that one self. They grab that for themselves. I will dominate, smiting that one away. Four kills now on to cop. He's finished up that Trinity Force. He's got another 2,400 gold in the inventory. So once he goes back and picks up that second item, that, I mean, he has to be the focal point of this team right now. And you you look at the team fighting potential that Curse do have. You know, there's the opportunity for Aatrox to, to dive in on people with the ball, then they get the Shockwave, then they get the Annie Stun, and then they get the Shin Taunt, potentially on multiple people. If they're able to make that kind of lockdown happen and Shifter or Don't Mash Me are a part of it, then they could very easily turn back a team fight and put themselves right back into this game. At the same time, at the same time, Coast is not grouping. Coast does not want to group. They're, they They see the team fight. They realize that Riven Ari may not be the best team fighters going up against just gobs and gobs of AOE CC. So they're, they're trying to play this like a team slasher flick. They're just kind of spreading out, trying to get members of Curse to go off on their own, and then just have Ari, which would be the slasher in this case, murder them um, like they were teens at camp. So this, this really is a very, very defensive game in a sense for them where they just never want to group up, and then they just want to catch someone off guard. Like if they group up, you're right. Their 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 team fight is abysmal in comparison to Annie, Oriana, Aatrox, Shen, and even Cop with his range poke provides a lot to team fights and the armor shred. So they can't go for that team fight, and they know it. But the other concern has to be how well will I will dominate scale into the late game. I mean that, that's the other thing we're gonna have to watch out for. Aatrox is considered an extremely dominant early game jungler, but Curse, I'm not exactly sure if they were able to take full advantage of that one. I mean, he's been a part of seven of their eight kills. I will dominate. He's been making plays happen across the map. He's going to try to make another one happen up in the top lane. Zion Spartan juking away. Doesn't want to get popped up by that dark flight. I will dominate. He's going to let him go. So just pick up the farm, and they recognize that the rest of Coast are probably moving through the jungle to respond. Actually, very little ward coverage, too. Red buff is being taken. Actually, it's not. It's trap. It's set up for I will dominate. Can he get out of it? He's done for. They used a couple of ultimates there to pick that one up, and now Shifter's gonna use the rest of his ult to get back out over the wall. Quas on the run. Charm will not land as he jukes it out, and the Orbit Deception, and the Wind Slash, but it's not gonna matter. Shifter just has too much damage and cleans him up. Quas well, juking skills by going straight forward in the line because like, because he just expected the dodges. That happens sometimes, especially at a pro level where you expect someone to dodge in one direction, they don't do so, and you just completely whiff a, a very easy skill shot. Quas really playing the mind game there, but it doesn't matter because the damage from Foxfire and the damage from Riven were just way too high. Now, Continued. Ooh, throws back the standard and just says, I dare you to stand between me and this point. <laughs> if you do at any point, I will pop you up and you will have a bad time. I love I love the angle coming out from uh, Don't Mash Me there, just playing way off to the side where the rest of his team was able to back him up, uh, making it harder for an over-the-wall uh, anti-initiation. They couldn't also catch the Daydream at the same time. Uh, this is... This is scary, man. 4,000 gold lead for a team that's snowballing and a team that loves to snowball with 
the ribbon, already pickups. I mean, Shifter is 823. What's his next purchase going to be? How much gold does he have? He has 1700 now. So he can't quite finish a Rabidon's Death Cap, which would be the normal build, but that's probably what he's waiting for to go back on. And then all this time, Dope Mastery is 0 0 1. Dope Mastery really hasn't been in this game. And with their spread out playstyle, they don't want him to be necessarily. If they're team fighting, it means they're doing something wrong. So he's 200 CS. He's, he's contributed very little in terms of kills, but his map pressure and the fact that he's always farming and always threatening bot lane or mid lane has really been helping out the team. And, and so much of this is just Zion Spartan has transitioned out of that 2v1. Uh, so much more smoothly than Quas did. Quas was, I mean, he just fell behind in CS and hasn't really had an opportunity to catch back up because Ribbon just hits a power spike very uh, uh, so much sooner than Shin does. Uh, if Shin isn't able to buy that early HP, if he isn't able to buy that early armor, then Ribbon kind of gets to do exactly what we've seen Zion Spartan do all game long. And now that Quas finally does have a Sunfire cape, Zion Spartan said, I could finish up my Hydra, but I'd much rather just have a Last Whisper. I mean, he also has the CDR boots. Normally, you actually see either brown boots or no boots coming out from him for quite some time. So, uh, Zion Spartan has just been playing this for the 1v1, just going for non-stop, I can all you at any, in at any time potential. And what she's doing right now, actually, going forward towards Quas, just trying to trade successfully, which he did there. He got a lot of damage done to Quas. Quas is doing all right. Quas's number one priority right now is keeping this tower as healthy as possible. And Zion Spartan's going to make that as difficult a job for him as he possibly can. Zion Spartan going to get caught out with a taunt. Loses a little over half his health to the tower. And that's the one advantage Shin will have on this one. The rest of Curse are in the mid lane. Zekin going to get charmed up. He's down before he has an opportunity to cast a spell. Double kill goes down for Nintendo Dex as he cleans up the kill on the Void Boy. Up in the top lane, Quas trying to make something happen against Zion Spartan. He tried to use the ultimate, got initiated on. Zion Spartan's going to be able to clean that one up. The flash comes out. The cataclysm there, but Cop going to be able to flash away, and just like that, Coast Snap 2, three kills across the map, they're moving in for the inhibitor tower. I mean, Curse had to love Shifter right now because of how many hearts are just hitting them square in the face. You, you gotta give credit to Shifter, because he did not make that a team fight. that was not a team fight. that was a pickoff. that was one charm lighting over the wall, because Curse's ward coverage going forward wasn't quite there. And now they're taking the inhibitor turret, now Cop is actually there to defend with Aatrox, and frankly, it's not really enough to be a major threat. At the same time, Coast going to back off on off out of this. They want to play safely. They do not want a team fight. They know all the ultimates are up for the members of Curse. I will, <laughs> so I will dominate. Decides not to live. Now he's burning his passive. And Domashi, is he going to fall down for this one? Cop just needs one more. He's going to Valkyrie forward. Picks up the kill. Shifter turns back around. Cop going to use the barrier. Shifter flashes over the daggers. Dominate. Gets back in with the dark flight. Beautiful shield coming out for Void Boy. It's not going to be enough. We see Shifter is able to pick that one up with the second tick of the Orbit Deception. The Ignite is down, shutdown goes down to Void Boy as he closes down the last auto attack. And just like that, Curse grabbed two more kills, uh, solely on the fact that Coast got a little too greedy for that inhibitor tower. They took it down low, but they, they burned a lot. I will dominate the passive is down, that is huge for them in team fights. They need him to initiate, and right now, with, with the way that uh, team fights are going, um, if he doesn't have that passive up, he's going to die with the only getting that stun off, which could be enough. But at the same time, we've seen how quickly he's gone down in the past. The Shen ults haven't been able to succeed on him. And that's that's a big deal that the passive is no longer available. They no longer have a reliable Shen ultimate. At the, and really, it's it's kills in response to kills in a turret. I, I, they really, really need to get the ward coverage down when they go for those pushes. The reason Curse got caught out was because Shifter was able to get into position, burst down Zeke before they could do anything. And without good ward coverage over the walls, and actually just spotting out Shifter, Shifter is essentially a fiddlesticks. If he lands a charm, if he goes for a, a Spirit Rush and lands that charm, then whoever he lands is going to die before they can cast anything at this point. Unless Quas happens to be in the area. Which, if that's the case, that means Zion Spartan has taken their top inhibitor. So you see Quas has now completed the Warden's Mail. He's trying to get as much armor and HP as he can for himself. He wants to get a Spirit Visage at some point, but right now he's not concerned at all with the Magic Resist. So he's just bought all of the health components of the item, and it's just now going in towards... He's grabbed the Warden's Mail. We'll see if he completes the Randuin's Omen before he moves back out. I will dominate. Baiting out the flag and drag combo from Nintendo Dex, they're going to use the Dark Flight to get over the wall, and is now going to have to run away from this one. As Nintendo Dex steps forward, there has a pink board down. They're going to try to secure their red buff before Coast can come in and pick up the steal. We see Nintendo Dex going to get the standard over there. I will dominate someone to pick it up. Okay, I thought for a second that Nintendo Dex used the smite on that one, but no, that was uh, dominate smite followed by an auto attack to pick that up. Nintendo Dex not quite having his uh, smite available. Now we're back into the situation they have <laughs> been top lane, just just staying there, just being a huge burden. To Quas. He has a three level advantage. He is impossible to beat in a 1v1 right now. And a 100 CS gap as well between those two. Coast grouped up mid lane. They're, just, they're not going to do anything because they, they just want one auto attack on the turret. 
and they know that curse is going to try and prevent that as much as possible. They want to bait stuff out. They want to bait uh, just mana cooldowns. Make make sure that curse is wasting time as Quash just gets closer and closer to that top turret. Oh, Cop does get tagged by the charm, but there was no follow up coming out from that one. Don't match me. We'll get that final tick onto the tower. It will fall down. And Coast, they, I mean, they're pretty dominantly in control of this one. They're up. I mean, what is this? Just over 7,000 gold? No, almost 8,000 gold. Uh, they've just taken down that tower. They're up 7 to 3 in terms of towers right now. This is not an easy game to be cursed. No, no, it is not, because Shen Ultimate also got used in that fight, too, which means that. All right, Zion Spartan can't really push uh, against Quas at this point because they're at the base. But even one or two seconds of pushing mid lane, you know, that's decent HP going off the inhibitor. But the HP was taken quite low. They still have a, a very squishy team, with the exception of Jarvan. So a good initi initiation from Curse can win a team fight. So you see Daydreaming right now with the Oracle, clearing out as many wards as he can, trying to make this as dangerous a defense as possible for Curse. As if they don't have Vision of Shifter, they don't know when that catch potential is there. Quas gonna find Don't Mastery coming up. Don't Mastery just gets a couple auto attacks down onto the tower. And when Quas thinks to come back out and maybe taunt him up, uh, Don't Mastery just immediately jettisons himself with that 90 caliber net. They're just, they're trying to get so close to that inhibitor. I love it. Like, they're inching closer and closer step by step. Just getting one or two pokes off from Dope Mashby. Unfortunately, the inhibitor is healing most of it back. So this plan may not be working, but they may just be looking for one catch or one opportunity. As a board, <laughs> will not be long for this world. So 9,000 gold separating these two sides. Dope Mashby, Nintendo decks unloading on the inhibitor. Shifter is there. He's the bouncer. If your name isn't on the list, you don't get to come in and see the, uh, see the boss. So I'm actually trying to clean that up as quickly as he can, and, and they're just isolating Zion Spartan and Quas. They know that Zion Spartan is going to win that matchup all day long. Uh, Quas is not really ever going to have an opportunity to get himself back into that one. Although he is, you know, he's doing a, a decent job of getting his gold income back up. He does has a, does have over a thousand gold, so we'll have the giants, but whenever he does have the opportunity to go back. Uh, but now Zion Spartan is going to get a little bit of help. Uh, excuse me, going to get a little bit of hurt rather as Iwo Dominic comes in for the side of the initiation. Here comes Shifter with the help. The Iwo Dominic goes into the passive immediately. Zion Spartan picks up the kill on the Quas. Deacon flashes forward, they're gonna get the ultimate back down, but no Valor comes out, they can't pick up the kill onto Riven. Don't Mash me grabs the kill onto Voidway over on the other side. Ultimate comes out from Don't Mash me, won't be able to clean anything up, but just like that, Coast grab two, they drop none, and they cycle back towards that mid inhibitor. There was so much more pressure coming out from Coast on that mid inhibitor, that Jarvan was able to walk through Curse's base, and actually get to the fight faster than any other member of Curse, so great, great pressure really leading to uh, pickups right there. I mean. They had to go for a fight, that was their one chance, but it really was a bait by Coast. They knew that Shifter was the area, they knew that Shifter was closer, and that the second he gets into a fight, especially with Taunt and Dark Flight down, it's easy kills, easy kills left and right for him. That, that I really, I'm impressed that Nintendo Dex was able to go through their base, though. Like, that makes no sense, because it's their base, they should have that under control, but, you know, the pressure and the fact that they did not have four members to defend against the four members from Coast meant that Nintendo Dex just was able to walk right on through that which is so, so uncommon, but they're, they're that in control of this game. So we see, I mean, you look at the item gap right now between these two sides. Okay, so we look at Riven, there's a Spirit Visage done. There's the Ravenous Hydra with the Last Whisper and the cooldown reduction boots. Compare that to Quas's Sunfire Cape, Warden's Mail, and then, you know, some pieces of some other items that he's gonna need later. The two junglers, uh, Nintendo Dex is basically up a Spectre's Cowl. There are a couple of Doran's Blades to account for there on the side of I Will Dominate, but that, you know, that's not really having too much impact. You look at the mid laners, and there is a massive gap here. Cop going to try to chase down the Zion Spartan, not going to be able to get any work done. So you look at Ari, there's a Death Cap, Death Fire Grasp, and Void Staff in there with the Spell Pen Boots, whereas Void Boy has only managed to complete the Athene's Unholy Grail, doesn't even have the Death Cap, which is going to be his second item yet. And then between the two AD carries, you know, whereas Don't Mash Me is still only 1-1-3. One, one, Actually, I guess we should point out that Coast have just two-manned the Baron. Uh, without too much difficulty there. And <laughs> Deacon almost gets one shot. Uh, he's not going to go down to that one. Uh, Coast are just dominantly in control of this game. They're up four towers. They're up a Baron. Uh, they're up multiple dragons. And I don't know that Quas is... Nope. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Shifter is going to be able to pick this one up. Last tick of the ultimate. Down goes Quas. Yeah, that's that's a dead Quas. They're also now up a Quas uh, over on the Coast side. Really, they're just too far ahead. It's, it's a numbers game at this point. Um, Cop has actually done a great job staying relevant. He's, he's tried to carry as much as he can, but the, the way the team fights have been starting, it's not even just the fact that Coast has more money, it's that Coast has had better initiation or CC. Like, they, they, there's never been a big team fight from Curse where they land a bunch of ultimates, so now's their only chance. And there's the flash for it. Daydream is going to be the one trying to land a bunch of ultimates. The ultimate does catch on to Don't Mash Me. Boy, boy, going to get him locked up with the.
Shockwave, and that's going to be a quick kill coming out for Cop. Now they're trying to chase down on a daydream and will not choose to do so as they recognize, oh, guys, Zion's Spartan is killing our bottom tower. And then top, we're going to lose the inhibitor too. Oh, goodness. There's so much pressure from Coast. Even when they get caught and lose someone, uh, they, you know, it doesn't stop them. They, they just lost their AD carry and they pick up an inhibitor in response and didn't greatly damage bot turret. I mean, that is how they're playing. They're not playing. It's actually, I will dominate is completely erased off the map. The shifter finally got his spirit rush back up. Actually, boy, boy, will he be the next to go down? He's gonna go down as well. Spirit Rush comes out from Shifter as he picks that up. Quas stepping forward now. We saw what happened the last time Quas found Shifter in the jungle. Zion Spartan gonna try to clean him up. Quas is gonna oblige him as he taunts back in. Curse, that's gotta be tantamount out to the forfeit. As they recognize right now, they only have Cop and Zekin alive. Cop stepping forward there, trying to do what he can to clear them off of the Nexus Towers. Getting a lot of damage down. There's the pop-up. Cop's gonna finally go down this game. No, will not. Is able to flash and Valkyrie out of that one. Knowing his limits very, very nicely there. Curse gonna go ahead they're gonna step back they're gonna abdicate the throne and that's gonna be coast taking down their nexus at 31 minutes all right and malthus i think the big question everybody's gonna ask now is who's gonna be replaced on curse for this loss oh shots fired i will dominate gonna go ahead and head out of the game that was an extremely one-sided win from coast uh, and but i mean you pointed that out before the game that they're on so many comfort picks shifters are in nintendo x is driving zion spartan's ribbon don't match me's caitlin uh, I mean, I guess if Daydream was playing Blitzcrank, this would basically be the stereotypical Coast lineup. And they they showed exactly why they love those champions so much. Incredibly strong, incredibly potent, and man, oh man, did they take Curse to the Cleaners. I mean, they, they were winning team fights without a team fight comp versus Ari, Shen, Aatrox, Oriana, and Corky. So that, that is just how well they played that matchup. And uh, if you give Coast the champions they're comfortable with, if you let them play like they want to play, they will they will dominate the game. All right, guys, so we're going to take a quick...